Backpacking lessons that stupid hikers learned the hard way. And how do I know that stupid hikers learn these lessons the hard way? Because I learned them the hard way. Yes, I'm calling myself stupid. I know I'm not the only backpacker who learned these lessons the hard way though. And the reason I know that is because I made a post on the community tab of my channel asking you guys what lessons you learned the hard way. Turns out a lot of these lessons are similar. And so I chose the top five and I'm gonna be sharing a bunch of your guys' comments, your lessons throughout the video, which is a great reason for you to subscribe to the channel, by the way, because quite often I'll use your comments, suggestions, and ideas in my videos. And so if you wanna be able to help influence these videos and maybe have your name in one or your, your content in one, you gotta hit that subscribe button. Plus we're getting close kind of to 300,000 and we wanna get there. So please help us get there. The first backpacking lesson that stupid hikers <laughs> learn the hard way, you have to eat and drink enough in order to stay energized and in order to stay safe when you're backpacking. Honestly, 99% of the stuff I say on this channel is just really obvious. Do you just pee and then you just wipe it with the cloth? But just because it's obvious doesn't mean it's not important. So let's think about this. You actually have to be quite intentional about the amount of calories that you're consuming when you're backpacking. Now I'm not saying you have to count every single calorie, although some people do. I'm, you don't have to go that far, but you do have to make sure that you're eating probably more than you normally do. Ingrid Pullhug6072 said, snack every couple of hours, even if you're not hungry, bonking hitting the wall is really the worst which is so true. You can't be bonking when you're trying to backpack. It's called backpacking, not bonk packing. That's gotta be the best joke I've ever made in my life. It's not just food that you need to be mindful of too. It's also uh, water. Yeah, you need to be drinking uh, plenty of that. You can't just go out and be like, oh yeah, it's just like normal life. You're gonna be sweating a lot extra. You're gonna be working extra hard. Buddy Bolin 001 said, dehydration at high altitudes is no joke. I had to be helicoptered out at Forester Pass ending my JMT hike. Spend as much time planning your nutrition, hydration, electrolytes as you spend in your gear. That's a scary story. Clearly, dehydration is extra, extra dangerous when you are at elevation. Replenish your electrolytes and eat more salty stuff like Jersey, I think they meant jerky and such, makes an absolute world of difference as opposed to just drinking plain water and eating only granola bars for snacks. Absolutely true, and I would even go a step further in saying that not only should you replenish your electrolytes, but you should do it using Drink Element, the sponsor of this video. Quite often on this channel, I talk about how sweaty of a person I am, and uh, in case you didn't believe me, you see this, it's not even that hot out, I'm telling you, and I sweat out all these electrolytes, I'm gonna be able to replace them with Drink Element. <laughs> Element is the best electrolyte drink mix on the market. It's not even close. First of all, it tastes amazing. Raspberry salt is great. Citrus salt is another great flavor. And they also have these flavors that are like unique, crazy, like mango chili, chocolate salt, lemon, habanero. Element is also very good for you. It doesn't have any BS. All it has is the electrolytes that you need, a great taste, and nothing else. It's perfect for after or during a hike or backpacking trip. It's perfect for a trail run or after a trail run, like right now when you're all sweaty. What you should do is go to drinkelement.com slash kylehateshiking. That's drinklmnt.com slash kylehateshiking. Now when you do that or you click through the link in the description and you place an order, you're gonna get a sample pack of eight different flavors that Element has thrown in with your order for no additional cost. There's a reason that Drink Element is popping up everywhere these days. It's because it's the best. You really wanna take advantage of this deal. One more time, that's drinklmnt.com slash kylehateshiking. You'll also be supporting the channel when you shop through that link. So I appreciate it very, very much. And I also appreciate Drink Element for continuing to support this content. Now back to the video. The next backpacking lesson that stupid hikers learn the hard way, you can't carry too much freaking weight on your back. Brandon, your pack's looking a little big, bud. <laughs> I feel like every backpacking tip, backpacking mistake video has this point in it, like don't carry too much weight. And so I've actually kind of avoided using this as like a direct point in one of my videos. Of course, I talk about being ultra light, but I don't recall at least recently having a point being like, yeah, don't carry too much weight, dummy. <laughs> Let's be honest, it's probably the number one lesson that so many backpackers, almost every single backpacker learns the hard way. If you have a lot of extra weight on your back, 
you're gonna not have a good time. And to be clear, I'm not saying that every single hiker should go out there and get a frameless backpack and sleep on a 1 8 inch foam pad. I'm just saying that you need to be mindful of how much weight you're bringing. Maybe don't bring that extra book. Or maybe you could stop being a nerd and just not read at all. <laughs> or that ax. The level of how lightweight you want to go is up to you, it's up to your individual circumstance. Regardless of those circumstances, as a general principle, you, you don't want to go too heavy. Leave a comment and let me know if you learned this lesson the hard way, which I almost guarantee you have, because like I said, pretty much everybody learns this lesson. My first backpacking setups were terrible. I carried an entire roll of duct tape. We probably weighed like five pounds. I literally carried like five pounds of, <laughs> that's like half my base weight now. Brian Zim said, just because it fits in your backpack doesn't mean you need to bring it which is an excellent point. A lot of new backpackers buy their backpack first and then they feel like naturally they just need to fill it with stuff. Just because it fits doesn't mean it needs to be packed. I was hoping I could rhyme that, damn it. Desert Fox 486 said, me and three other noobs hiked from Yosemite Valley to Little Yosemite Valley. And there's much talk of UL these days, but we were UH, we're inventing new words here. Ultra heavy, lugging insane amounts of food and needless gear. Never have I experienced such exhaustion. I don't think my first couple of backpacking trips where I was overpacking were quite that brutal. I guess it happens, dude, I don't know. But the next backpacking lesson that stupid hikers learn the, the hard way, you cannot, should not, will not underestimate the weather. What the you could not check it at all. Don't don't do that. Look how wet this man is. Freaking, there's a joke in there somewhere. <laughs> you could check the weather and then you could ignore the weather and be like, ah, negative seven degrees. I'll just throw on an extra layer and I'll be fine. Like, that's, there's no problem, dude. Let's go backpacking. Don't do that. Always bring rain gear and use a pack liner even if the forecast is clear, which is such a good point. Underestimating the weather could even mean not preparing for bad weather, even though it's supposed to be good weather. Always have rain gear. Always make sure the stuff inside your backpack is waterproof because let's face it, the weather in the mountains is quite volatile. Don't rely on someone else telling you what the weather will be like. Now I do my own research on weather conditions I would love to hear the story behind that. Who who, who totally screwed over Shan Shanley? Pushing my hike during a heat wave and having limited water. Got a clot in my right retina and lost my vision. Permanent damage. Drink lots of water with electrolytes to reduce the risk. Wow, Phil. I mean, that's an extreme example of underestimating the weather and the consequences that come with it. Don't underestimate how difficult and dangerous clearly it can be to hike in extreme heat. Let's all leave some love for Phil in the comments. Phil, I hope you're still getting out there and hiking, and I hope you're doing well. By the way, guys, this is all stuff that I've talked about extensively on my podcast called Trail Tales. I know a lot of you already listened to the show, but if you haven't listened to the show, I encourage you to do so. It's now easier than ever to because the entire catalog of Trail Tales episodes, 150 plus of them, are now on YouTube for you all to go enjoy. And of course, you can listen on Spotify or Apple or whatever, literally any podcast app. I'll have a link to the channel in the description. Please go subscribe there because the, the difference between the subscribers on this channel and on the podcast channel is kind of embarrassing. Go check it out. Trail Tales, the podcast. Okay. The next backpacking lesson is that you have to treat your feet right. And if you don't, you're going to be sorry, dude. It does not matter how good of shape you're in. It does not matter how lightweight your gear is. It does not matter how sexy you are. If your feet hurt, you're going to have a bad time and you're not going to be able to backpack. My first couple backpacking trips, I was using terrible shoes. I was using dress socks. I had hella blisters. I basically broke one of my toes just from slamming it against the shoe repeatedly. But my feet were a mess and uh, yeah, I, I <laughs> don't wear dress socks to hike. Your feet will punish you for the rest of your life. I thought I was the only one that was stupid enough to hike in dress socks. No offense. Getting shoes properly fit and wearing the right socks are a huge deal. I slid around in my shoes and hurt my toes and heal pretty bad. That's pretty much what happened to me on my first couple trips too. There's just so many things that can go wrong with your feet. It's like certain shoes are going to work for some people, but might not work for other people. Trail runners, I suggest you start there unless you're carrying like huge, huge packs or you're hiking in the winter, then obviously use boots. But for normal three season backpacking, trail runners certainly are the place to start. And then you just got to try a couple. I don't know. The next backpacking lesson that stupid hikers learn the hard way. You need to be humble because things can and will go wrong. If we're going to take backpacking 
super seriously and get all pissed off every time something goes wrong. You're not gonna have fun, dude. I will be the first person to admit that sometimes you're just in a mood out there. I can deal with cold, but rain and cold is like worst case scenario. It's just so nasty. You can't just be happy-go-lucky all the time, but I really think it's important to try to have as good of an attitude and be as humble as you possibly can. This has been a low moment sitting here in the heat and I can't do it right now. Let's take just a small example. Let's say your shoelace rips a little bit and so you have to like retie it in a way that's a little funky. It's not a big deal. Your shoe's still fine, but it's just kind of a pain in the ass. If you're not being humble and you're already kind of in a bad mood and having a bad attitude about things, you're probably going to blow that way out of proportion. Don't get worked up again. Tons of things are always going to be going wrong and let's list a bunch. <laughs> Trout Fisher learned the lesson that if you need caffeine to wake up in the morning, be sure you've packed it. Yeah, I need my caffeine. Rod Outdoors learned the lesson that I nearly knocked myself out on a solo backpacking trip from the rock bag flinging straight back to my head. They're referring to hanging a bear bag. You throw the line over the tree, the rock bag goes over the branch and then goes whoop. That has almost happened to me multiple times. JC Slaughter learned the lesson to triple check. I have all my stuff before heading a couple hours down the trail. Ooh, I learned this lesson actually somewhat recently when I was on the PCT. I didn't talk about it in the video, but I actually started my trip and forgot a lighter. And so I actually ended up backtracking a few miles and hiking to a gas station off trail just to buy a lighter. Total moron move. Alex Green learned the lesson that you should not take your wife's word for it when she gives you fresh batteries for your headlamp. <laughs> Never zip or unzip anything in anger. Yeah, I'll just like frustratingly try to zip something on my tent too hard and then it breaks or it becomes very close to breaking and it gives you a little Heart attack, we don't like that. And Doug learned the lesson that you should always pack a few condoms when you're backpacking because sometimes what happens on the trail doesn't always stay on the trail. Don't learn that lesson the hard way, folks. Oh, I guess Doug learned it a hard way. Hard, get it? Ha <laughs> ha, this video needs to end right now, dude.